What's up, everybody? OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here for another edition of The Mikey Show. And uh, Happy New Year. It's New Year's Eve to 2023. And uh, I am going to tell you guys about one of my favorite amps of 2023. And in fact, I think it is my favorite. I don't think there's a better amplifier under $20,000 that is a stereo class AB amp, period. Um... I could even say any solid state amp. I don't think there's a better stereo solid state amp, D or whatever, uh, under 20K that, that matches this uh, amplifier. Um, it is a the Jeff Roland 555, and uh, I'm going to uh, turn around. I'm going to show it to you guys right now. As you can see, done in the classic Roland two-tone, that fly-cut, beautiful machined front face panel, which is his trademark. Um, again, this is not a face plate. This is part of a full cavity. So this is a piece of billet aluminum, one solid block of aluminum. And it is a uh, cavity. It, the cavity is made up through the bottom. And, uh, and then the amplifier is put in from the bottom. But that means that this is a very like, you know, I mean, <laughs> there is no box to wrap on. You know, this is a solid block of aluminum. Uh, this, this whole chassis is actually the heat sink inside when he mills things out the output devices are actually mounted directly to this chassis which acts as a heat sink um, and you can even see if we look at the heat sinks on the side the fins you see how they're different thicknesses okay um, people might go oh that's an interesting design he just kind of did it because it looks cool well if you know about things like resonance control which you probably wouldn't unless you've been amp building amplifiers for 40 years like Jeff, you make these different uh, different widths to uh, prevent resonance. If they were all the same width all the way across, they would have the same resonant frequency and they would sympathetically resonate together when that frequency was reached. By making these different thicknesses, you change the resonant frequency of each fin so that they never completely would resonate in unison and it kills resonance on the chassis. These are the little things. There are so many little things built into this amplifier that at some point you have to just give up and say, you know what, that's a better amplifier than anything I've ever seen. And you know what, I'm just going to buy it. There's more into that design. You can't come up with a, with a, with a brand that's just been around a couple of years. You come out of somewhere, you know, in the Eastern Bloc country and just have a $65,000 amplifier or whatever and claim that it's so good. It's ridiculous when you look at it and you compare it to um, an amplifier like this and you know what goes into it. I just had a two-hour conversation with Jeff Roland telling me about everything that's in this amplifier and, and it's stunning what goes into this. You can see if I get closer, you can see the beautiful machining. These are just little pieces of dust. They're not, they're not marks or anything like that. Uh, um, anyways, so we go around. Now I can barely turn this puppy around. But if we go around, let me. Okay, there. Now you can see the inputs. It's got differential inputs, of course, which is a, a typical Jeff Rowland feature is balanced. Um, and in his words, RCA is for commercial grade stuff. It's not pro level or high level. Um, so all his stuff has balanced. Now, if you have RCAs, you just use an adapter. He's got circuitry inside that will take uh, the single-ended signal and work with it, and you have to, nothing to worry about. All you do is you get a little teeny adapter on the outside, no big deal, to run this with single-ended. Now, as you can see, we've got stereo inputs and a mono input. We've got stereo outputs and a mono output. So it's very simple to understand. And one switch, stereo to mono. This is 150 watts per channel in stereo, 300 watts, uh, I'm sorry, 350 watts as in mono. Um, it could be as high as 500, but he would have to really run this thing hard. Jeff would rather keep it um, lower for lower noise and longevity than to crank the, the, the piss out of the thing and really wring it out. Jeff would rather have it work in a very linear fashion um, and work better. So that's the outputs here. We have a 12 volt trigger. If you turn your things on that way with a, with a preamp uh, and our AC input, this is a dual voltage. So it can be 240 or 120, doesn't matter. You just plug it in and it does it. Uh, and so this is the chassis again. You know, I mean, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, a rock. You know, I mean, there is no dinging or, you know, I mean, you can, you know, it's like uh, I don't know if I, 
I'm not going to do that. I'll make a mark on it. But I mean, this thing is built like a brick shit house, for lack of a better term. Um, you've never seen an amplifier built like this. Um, hang on a second. I'm going to flip it over and we'll take a look inside. Hold on. Okay, so first of all, here is the bottom lid. Like this came right off here, right? I pulled it off um, and you can see very solid um, brushed aluminum. And uh, now we go inside and this is all milled out of a block of aluminum, right? And then there's certain pieces like uh, this right here that are left up high, as you can see. Um, and then the outboard, uh, output devices are mounted directly onto that. That's a heat sink. That means this whole chassis is the heat sink, you know, the whole body of this thing, one giant block of aluminum. Now, I have put tape over these just because there's people that think they can look at parts and decide how something's built, which is nothing further from the truth. But this is the AC inlet. You can see the AC power, right, comes in right here, and it goes into this EMI filter. This is a giant EMI filter. I mean, you can see sort of the size of it compared with the rest of the unit. A lot of companies will just put little-ass uh, EMI filters on the back. This, the reason this is so elaborate is because with a switching mode power supply, you can actually put noise back on the line uh, if you don't take measures to prevent that. And you can pollute the AC line and pollute the other components in your audio rig. So Jeff is very cognizant about this, and this works along with active power cor factor correction on this power supply for incredible results. Now, this power supply is a thousand watt power supply. For you to see a traditional linear power supply with a thousand watts, you would have a massive big toroid, a whole bunch of capacitors. You'd have that whole deal. You don't have to do that with this power supply. This is extremely advanced power supply uh, um, um, technology. Power supplies are with EVs and all that crap that's going on. There's a ton of research and development going into power supplies. So this is extremely high level. You can't see it, but this is a four level, four layer PC board. These are both four layer boards. And you see these screws here. There's two screws there. There's two screws back here. That means there's a whole power module underneath here and a whole power module underneath there. So there's the two rails positive and negative rail. We've got two. That's probably regulation on the way out there. Um, but this is a power, active power factor corrected. Let's put it this way. This power supply has a pow power factor of 0.98. One would be the perfect power supply. This has got a power factor of 0.98. So it's extremely high, way beyond what a linear power supply can accomplish. And of course, look at the size of the thing. Okay. So this is very, very advanced. As we move over here, we move over to, we've got the input section and the output section of the amplifier. Here's the left channel, here's the right channel, utilizing those uh, outputs. And you can see the, the, the input wiring that comes from over here is all Teflon insulated, silver plated copper, high level stuff. Um, and you know, this stuff doesn't really matter. It's just a nice little touch. It's not needed, but it's a nice touch. Uh, and underneath here, as you can see in this can, which is just like a really beautiful piece, is his trans, trans impedance circuit. This amplifier is in trans impedance design. Man, I just got off and there's transformers underneath here, the two Lundahls that you know, those little block, the Lundahls are underneath on the bottom side of this uh, board here uh, for the, those input transformers because this is input transformer coupled. Um, there are so many designs. Jeff described how the driver circuit works. He described to me how the trans impedance circuit works. He described in to me how he runs this thing and, and how the input is fully balanced, what it does with single-ended uh, circuits or single-ended inputs and how it changes it uh, and, uh, and so forth. Um, you can bridge this amp. I think I mentioned that on the other side for 300. So... Um, then this works in the negative phase, this side works in the positive phase, but typically this is left channel and this is right channel. This is a trans impedance module that plugs in. This is something that special sauce that Jeff, nobody, nobody does like this. This is Jeff's circuit, even though he puts it in a can, this is his circuit. Um, this is not off the shelf. There's, there's uh, very few, these of course are, you know, off the shelf transistors, things like that. Uses very high quality pieces. And again, we can't see what's underneath. Um, there are so many things. He started to go into what this amplifier does, and there is nothing short of magic that happens from this piece from having 40 years of design integrity. Um, it, it, it just it comes with trial and error. After 40 years, you're able to put something together like this 
that is absolutely world class and an incredible piece. I have to tell you, I've not heard an amplifier like this ever before. I put it into my rig, and even for the people that came to the to the room at uh, at the Capital Audio Fest and came back again and came back again, people got it. It's an extremely quiet amplifier. When I put it into my rig, that's the first thing I noticed was how quiet it is. And I'm going to do another video to describe to you what I mean by quiet because it's hearing the things that aren't, that, that hearing the silence, okay? Which sounds like a, a, a weird thing, right? How can you hear silence? How can you hear that's, that what, what is, that which is not there? But you very much can hear the silence in this amplifier. It is like, I'll, I'll make another video to describe to you what it's all about. But this amplifier is 14,800. Um, it is, you can bridge it and have two of them for, whatever, 28 grand, let's say I'd sell them for, uh, which is the same as having, same power as having a 735, like having 735 monos for over $10,000 less. So this to me is a real breakthrough amplifier. Uh, I think he really nailed it with many of the properties of this amp and the cost and the the where it is in the lineup. This is forever a forever amplifier this is a forever you could have this as your only stereo amp put it with some of those stone speakers that i have the fisher and fishers like the twenty thousand dollar speakers and forget about it man you don't need put it with a playback designs mpd8 the last system you'll ever need you'd never want for more unless you want to tinker around with tweaky stuff then you can go get your tubes and do all your stuff if you're into that thing but look if you just want to get this over this is an amplifier that meets my level of ocd with having a, a, an extreme refined level of quality, okay? There's a difference between refined, elegant design, and then just overdone design. And you guys know where I sort of find products. They have to have a value, and they have to be of a certain level. And I wanted to just take a couple minutes on New Year's Eve to tell you guys about the 555. It is my favorite stereo amp of 2023. And um, I think probably through 2024, I doubt there's going to be something else that will dethrone this that's going to be a 150-watt stereo amp. No, and don't even try and start telling me about the cheap amps. Those amps are not the same, man. Um, you may look inside as a non-engineer and think it looks the same or it looks similar. There's so many design elements in here. I mean, two hours Jeff was telling me about all the different things that he put in there and why he did it and what they do. And it's like, uh, I was, I was, I was just at some point, it's just, you just have to just say, you know what? I trust Mikey. I'm going to buy what he, what he recommends and buy this freaking amp and put it, I guarantee it. You don't have anything to worry about, but at some point, and typically this happens with people that buy from me, they buy one thing, they go, oh my God, totally blew me away. Then they start buying everything else because everything that I sell to them delivers on this level and I guarantee it. So anyways, I want to take that second. Hope you guys have a happy new year. Again, this is the Jeff Rowland 555. It's an amazing 150 watt per channel stereo amp, as good as you can get for under 20 grand. I don't think you could even find something for 20 grand that would be the, uh, uh, the same sonic excellence as this is. Sure, you could buy a bigger box, you know, but not the same sonic excellence. So anyways, thanks for joining. See you.